Okay, so welcome to this next uh, video in the playlist on functional analysis. We are continuing with our study of metric spaces, and uh, again we're going to look at uh, separability of metric spaces, and we're going to look in this case at um, the fact that L infinity, which is a metric space we've seen before, is not separable. So I'll start with a quick um, reminder of what L infinity is and uh, then we'll see why it is not a separable metric space. Okay, so L infinity is a, uh, well firstly the set underlying the metric space is the set of all sequences, so let's call the sequences, let's say all sequences x, which is a sequence x1, x2, uh, x3, x4, etc. You go on and on. Uh, so it's all sequences, all infinite sequences, uh, such that um, the elements, well firstly the elements are either real or complex numbers depending on whether you are talking about the uh, a real L infinity space or a complex L infinity space. Uh, for full generality we'll just do complex numbers because obviously the real numbers is a subset of the complex numbers. Uh, oh in fact actually since what we're trying to prove is it's not separable, um, well we'll c keep our arguments general. We, c we would really need to do it for the real numbers and then if it's not true for the real numbers since the real numbers is a subset of the complex numbers then that it won't be true for the complex numbers as well, but I would have to prove that to you. Uh, so we'll try and keep our arguments general so that we just encapsulate both of them at the same time. And then uh, it's such that uh, the um, such that the supremum over, let's say, i is an element of the natural numbers of uh, the modulus of x i is finite, basically. So uh, that is all sequences such that uh, the mod uh, that uh, the maximum, if you like, the supremum of uh, all these terms of the sequence, their modulus, uh, is less than plus infinity. So what this means, this bit here, is in fact what it means is the supremum of the set x1, x2, x3, all the way on to infinity. So for all natural numbers, you put all the terms of the sequence into a set and you take the supremum of that set which is the least upper bound that needs to be some finite value and I've made a mistake sorry we, what we really want is the modulus of these so in real numbers that means the absolute value so you uh, take negative numbers and make them positive in complex numbers that clearly means the complex modulus function where you take um, in some sense the length of a complex number okay uh, so um, an example, let's say it's the examples that are in here. So the sequence uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. That, if you continue on and on, just alternating between 1 and 0, that's clearly going to be an element of this set. The reason being that there are only two elements, 1 and 0. So in this great big set, you could obviously put, you'd obviously originally put all the elements in, but then you realize, oh, I'm being, I've got loads of degeneracies here, so I might as well just have the set. 1 and 0, and when I take the supremum of that set, it's equal to 1, uh, because that's the least upper bound. If you look at this on the real line, here's 0, here's 1. Uh, the least upper bound for this set is going to be 1, because an, it ha uh, the least upper bound has to be an upper bound, meaning it has to be greater than or equal to every element of the set. 1 is indeed greater than or equal to every element of the set. And it has to be the least upper bound, which means that if you take any number smaller than that number, so if you take any number smaller than 1, uh, that number will not be an upper bound, i.e. it will not be greater than or equal to every element of the set. And that's simple to see, because if you take any number less than 1, uh, then 1 is is an element of the set and it will now be greater than that element uh, so that new element cannot possibly be less than or equal to uh, sorry greater than or equal to every element of the set because indeed it's less than one I, I might have said greater than it, it got those greater than's the wrong way around I mean this cannot n any longer be an upper bound because one is bigger than it so it can't be greater than or equal to every element of the set okay um, so there's a simple example, and there are a lot of sequences in here, whether you're dealing with real or complex numbers. Obviously, if you're dealing with complex numbers, then all of the real number, all of the um, real number sequences that were in the real version of L infinity are in that set as well, so the complex one's even bigger. Okay, um, so uh, that's our underlying set, and then we uh, defined a metric on this set, so we defined uh, D, and often it's abbreviated D infinity, uh, of uh, 
two sequences, x and y. So remember, these are not just numbers, these are sequences. So x is a whole sequence. So x is equal to x1, x2, x3, etc. And y is also equal to the sequence y1, y2, etc. Okay? Uh, and the distance between them is going to be equal to the supremum over, let's say, i is an element of the natural numbers of the modulus of xi minus yi. So basically what you do is you construct a new sequence which is x minus y which is just basically defined by uh, take all the terms and uh, subtract off their corresponding term here. So you get take x1 minus y1, x2 minus y2, x3 minus y3, etc. And then basically you work out what is the supremum of all of the set containing all of these terms, which is what this means basically. It means the supremum of the set containing x1 minus y1, uh, x2 minus y2, x3 minus y3, etc. onwards. And you take the supremum of that set. So firstly, let's ask, why is this? Oh, sorry, this should, these should have been modulus again. You should have modulus around here. Otherwise, we, they could be negative numbers, they could be uh, complex numbers. We need a set of non-negative real numbers, basically. Um, okay, uh, so the modulus should be there. Uh, so let's firstly discuss why. Why does this supremum exist? Why does this supremum exist? So, if we um, 